will be John Tweet. John is a young producer from Larchwood, Iowa. He will be visiting with you about the slatted floor with a deep pit barn. All right, so as Beth said, my name is John Tweet. I farm along with my dad just across the river into Iowa, uh, outside of Larchwood. And I graduated college in 2009 and came home to farm. Uh, we looked into ways to expand our feedlot operation and um, we ended up building two buildings, but today I'm going to talk about the deep pitted slatted floor barn. Uh, the building is oriented east and west. Uh, the building itself is 70 feet wide by 200. Uh, the, the feed alley uh, is inside of the building on the north, so the pen itself is 55 wide by 200 long. Uh, the slatted floor, um, we put down uh, rubber mats, so the slats are covered, the floor is covered with rubber mats, and uh, the building is 480 head to 500 head total capacity. Two pens split, the building split in half into two pens, equal size. Like I said, feed alley on the north, uh, there's a curtain on the north side, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the water tanks are one water tank per pen uh, located in the middle of each pen and uh, the, <coughs> the water line for the water tanks has to run up alongside the south wall of the pit and then up through curving into the water tank here. And uh, the working facility is completely separate from this building. So each pen, 240 to 250 head uh, density, averages 21 to 23 square feet per head, and you get about four and a half to five and a half inches of bunk space per head. And we only finish cattle in this building. We haven't put anything under uh, 850 pounds in, 800 pounds. Um, Primarily we finish steers, we have finished a couple pins of peppers with no discernible difference between the two. And uh, placed at 900 for the last 120 days of the feeding period, and then marketed. <coughs> so feeding, um, we feed twice a day. Um, we've, I guess we've always fed twice a day, but uh, in this particular building, uh, bunk space limits you and you pretty much have to feed twice a day. And then um, this is a ration that we feed anywhere from a 58 to a 62 mega cal. Um, I thought this was important to put in just because your, the diet in this type of building greatly affects um, the manure output and what it's like to handle it in the deep pit and then the nutrient concentration of it as well. So, um, bedding, there is no bedding in the deep pit, and uh, we have a 12-foot pit, and that's still not a year's storage. Um, but you can see the cattle work the manure through the slats. This, uh, um, we happened to haul manure this year when we had a pen empty, so you can see um, the slats stay very clean. So for manure hauling, um, we have it custom hauled, and um, there is the filling is split up into four pits. Um, so that's two pits per pen, and each pit has two spots to pump out. You have to there's gates in the south fence, and you have to lift a slat out of the pen in order to put the pump in. Um, so four, four pits, they're 50 by 54. This is the dimensions on each pit, and that gets you to the 200 feet for the building. Um, <coughs> pumping takes roughly two days, two big days, um, in the spring and in the fall. And um, yeah, I'm under uh, the Iowa Manure Management Plan for over 500 head confinements. Uh, ventilation, uh, not a lot to talk about here for ventilation. It's a one-piece manual curtain uh, on 
the north wall and then the south is uh, completely open. And uh, I don't do hardly any daily maintenance on the curtain. It's opened um, whenever I think it's warm enough in the spring and then closed when it starts to get cold in the fall. Um, other ventilation things, the, this is a gable roof and it has a center ridge vent. Um, I think it provides a really excellent airflow and um, we put in 12 high velocity fans, um, six on each side of the building for still days in the summertime. Uh, with the cattle density, you can get a lot of animal heat that just settles uh, over top of the cattle and um, with, without any wind, um, the fans help a lot uh, on those very still kind of condition days. So uh, things that have worked well, I really have liked the building overall. Um, we were in a spot where we had a small open lot, but um, it's in a poor location and we're not able to expand that easily. Um, it, it has a very low number of manure management hours, um, even compared to open feedlots. And then uh, this is, <laughs> Beth put in this picture, we built these um, gates, cages, to put in, oh, there. Uh, if there's cattle in the pen, we put those in around where we take the slat out, and it allows us to um, not have to move the cattle out when we pump, and they're very stable and um, easily left there overnight or whatever. Cattle comfort is very, very high. Um, we put the mats in uh, about a year after we had the building, and I think that's helped significantly with the cattle comfort. Um, dry matter intake is, is great in uh, the winter, and then in, if you have wet springs, or, and then in the hot weather, and any kind of inclement weather. Um, having them inside in this type of, of building is, is fantastic for dry matter intake. And average day gain and feed efficiency have been, have been very good. Um, so yeah, things that, that I didn't know going in. Um, we had some, some leg issues uh, with uh, lameness on the bare concrete slats. Uh, That's one of the reasons that I decided to put rubber mats in. And then uh, beef manure is harder to handle uh, and a little more work to handle than, than hog manure in a liquid form. It's, it's thicker and uh, you have to agitate longer and um, I actually add water into the pit as well before I start um, agitation. Uh, not a lot of water, um, probably equates to about one manure tanker per pit of water. And that helps stir it up. And um, if you run with two pumps in a pit, uh, one agitating all the time, it seems to seems to work very well. So yeah, things I would change. Um, uh, a lot of the buildings I've seen, or not a lot, but some have bunks on both sides, uh, both the north and the south side. And it has its advantages as far as um, allowing you to maybe start smaller cattle that aren't used to that small bunk space. And um, yeah, I put the mats in initially. If I had to do it over again, they are, I think they're a good investment for cattle comfort and um, improved uh, <coughs> efficiencies. So that's all I have. I went through that as fast as I could. Beth, she's a drill sergeant. <laughs> You'd think I threatened him with a hot <laughs> shot. <laughs> we got just a few minutes because we're running his presentation went just a little shorter, and that's fine. I am going to open it up right now. We do have some mics here, and do you have some questions specifically? Yes, sir. Oh, the cattle grazing yield. Any difference? Um, the question was, are the cattle difference in terms of grazing yield? Yep. Yeah. Does this mic work? Yeah. Okay. The, the grade and yield, I, we've never done uh, grade-based selling, so I don't have exact numbers. Um, but they have always come back with 
with good results. I, like I said, I don't have exact numbers for you. Yes, ma'am. Did you say that you hire out the pumping when you were from the pit? Yes. And yeah. have you ever, since you do that, have you ever considered doing it yourself, or is that like a long-term plan? The question was, do you hire out uh, the pumping, and you consider that part of uh, you consider doing this as part of your long-term plan yourself? Yeah, I guess uh, the initial capital investment of having the equipment, we don't own any hogs, and so we don't have any of the liquid equipment. And um, with just the one building, I, I don't think it is, uh, is feasible to justify the, the cost to do it ourselves at this time. Power. With that size pit, hmm. are you getting it agitated mm -hmm. completely? Yes. The question was on the pit, are you getting it completely agitated? Yeah, uh, I haven't had any issues with leaving solids in the pit. I'll, not any issues, but this year, now that I've got it figured out, <laughs> we, if you, uh, we added a little more water this year, and um, we run with two eight-inch um, agitation pumps, and uh, this year, I, I, we got all of it without leaving any solids, so. Okay, so another question? Uh, why'd you go with the, the gable roof barn versus a monoslope? The question was, why did you go with a gable roof style barn versus a monoslope? Um, I guess I don't, I don't have a fantastic reason for that. Um, simply that uh, the construction company we went through liked the gable buildings better, and I didn't see any discernible advantage to having a monoslope over the gable. 